the topics that i will cover in this video are types of openings parts of openings and dimensions of openings openings can be categorized on the basis of many criteria they may be categorized as per use the material used for making them their geometrical shape or the type of operability they have categorization as per use these may be openings for a person to move from one space to another for this we need a door buildings need openings to allow fresh air into spaces and exhaust stale air this is known as ventilation of spaces windows doors and ventilators help in this exchange of air between spaces openings also allow natural light to come into interior of buildings this may be by allowing sunlight to come directly into rooms or ambient or reflected light to come into work spaces doors windows and ventilators they help in bringing natural light into buildings openings are also useful to capture the view of external environment for a better experience of spaces inside user may like to capture a good external view and opposite to this can be that a user wants only light and air from outside but restrict the view between the exterior and interior spaces design of openings will get affected according to this need again doors and windows may be used with specific design and materials for such varied needs the next categorization of openings can be based on the materials used to fabricate them the openings that we are talking about are doors windows ventilators jalis or grills All these can be fabricated in wood, steel, aluminum, with or without glass as infill material. The openings will then get a name accordingly. So it will be wooden door, a steel window, aluminum door, glazed wooden window, etc. so based on the material used for fabrication the opening gets its name or categorization the next categorization of openings is based on the shape of the opening doors are rectangular or square these may have a flat top or an arch top
something like this windows may be rectangular circular semicircular etc in shape another categorization of openings may be based on the technique of operability in it what is the meaning of operability operability is mechanism of operating an opening to control the movement of persons air light or view from that opening let us see some common examples the most common is the hinged opening in this a shutter is hung using a hinge parallel to either the side or the top of the opening as the sketch shows the hinges shown in red hold the door to the side and the door can swing to open or close this is the side hung door there can be a top hung situation also like in this ventilator in this the hinges are on top and the shutter swings vertically for opening or closing top hung is mostly found in windows or ventilators whereas side hung is used both in doors and windows another type of operability is of pivot in pivoted openings a shutter is pivoted at two points along an axis the shutter rotates along this axis the axis can be horizontal for windows and vertical for doors Windows and ventilators also have louvers. These may be movable louvers or fixed louvers. Where the fixed louvers are used in washrooms, movable louvers may be a window in a room. fixed louvered window has louvers in the form of frosted or translucent glass this glass slants downwards from inside to outside it allows light and air but restricts the view movable louvered window has a mechanism by which the angle of louvers can be changed to open or close the window thus we saw three examples of operability of openings that is hinged openings pivoted openings and the louvered openings 
there is another common situation of operability which allows only light through it it restricts view and movement of air persons or things it may also allow view by using clear glass This window has glass fixed within it which cannot be operated. Let us understand the parts of an opening after it has been created in a wall. Generally, an opening has two vertical faces and two horizontal faces. The horizontal face on top is the soffit of the lintel. The two vertical faces are the jams. This horizontal face at the bottom is the sill. A door opening will also have the same parts soffit of lintel jams the sill in this case is the same as the floor level it is also called the threshold fixed upon the structural parts are the operative parts of the openings these facilitate the operation of opening or closing the door or the window the two main parts are the frame and the shutter the shutter may be opaque glazed or as louvers The frame is the framework of wood, steel or aluminum which is fixed to the inner surface of the opening. That is the jams, the sill and below the lintel. The shutter operates within this frame since it is difficult to fix the operative mechanism straight to the structural surfaces and seal the opening completely.
Thus, coming back to this window plan, the shutter is hinged to the vertical member of the frame so that it can swing for closing or opening. The following schematic plan of the window shows the frame and the shutter in plan. The frame has rebates for shutter and plaster which has not been detailed here. It will be taken in the next lecture. Let's make a schematic section of a window to see these parts. This is the schematic section through a door showing its parts. I miss making members of frame visible beyond the section plane. Let me add that to the sketches. Old buildings had members of frames on all four sides of a door. The member on ground was called the threshold. Let us now understand the dimensions of an opening. An opening is created in wall using structural dimension. Then it has finished dimensions and clear dimension. These can be in plan or section. Then we have certain heights, the sill dimension and the lintel dimension. These are taken from the floor. What are structural dimensions? These are for example the clear dimension between the two unfinished or unplastered jams. So, for the same case, once the walls have been plastered, the remaining dimension between the plastered jam is the finished dimension.
when the frame is fixed between the opening then the maximum dimension available between the frame for anybody or anything to pass without any obstruction is the clear dimension of the opening now coming to sill dimension and the lintel dimension sill dimension is the dimension from the unfinished floor to the top of the sill and lintel dimension is the dimension from the unfinished floor to the bottom of the lintel Let us understand these in schematic drawings. This is the line of plaster of the wall. The plaster is also on the jams. the structural dimension the finish dimension the clear dimension making the schematic section let us see other dimensions the floor level sill dimension lintel dimension clear dimension the sill dimension for a door is 0 depiction of a few common operability of openings has been shown in drawings mind you these are standard ways of depictions accepted universally This is how you depict a side hung door in elevation. Remember, the dotted lines meet in the center of the hinge side of the door. Applying the same principle for a top hung window The dotted lines merge in the center of the side having the hinge. 
If there is a fixed glazing in an opening, then these dotted cross lines depict that situation. And this is how you show the side hung door in plan. The arc shows the extent of swing of a shutter. Don't show it by a 45 degree line. Hope the information shared was useful. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you really like the video, please do subscribe the channel.